how many people watch over the next few days. It's really delightful. So welcome to you all. I have a very interesting show for you today. Um, as always, we want you to comment and be part of the show. So in the comments down below, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever taken your Instant Pot somewhere else other than your kitchen to cook? Have you taken it in your RV or your trailer, on a boat, to a hotel? Um, you know, that's why we designed the quick and carry bags for the Instant Pot, so that you could take your Instant Pot somewhere else, because a lot of people like to take their Instant Pot with them when they travel or when they're going to a potluck or a picnic. Um, but today's recipe is really for the person who is traveling with their Instant Pot. So please comment down below where is the most interesting place that you have taken your Instant Pot and cooked with it, and one of you is going to win a quick and carry bag, which is a great prize for tuning in today. So please comment down below, and by the end of the show, we're going to pick one of you to actually win a six-quart quick and carry bag. So I want to give a shout out to my sister Sarah. Hello Sarah. I know that you were going to try to watch today. My sister just had, well her dog had eight puppies on Valentine's Day which was very special and uh, so maybe she's busy with dogs right now but my sister and I were chatting this morning and she told me the perfect story to share with you. Last week, my sister and her husband were in Florida, and they were at a resort where people park their yachts. And she went into, like, the living room of the resort, and there was an older gentleman who was sitting there with an Instant Pot on the table. And she said to him, oh, I see you have an Instant Pot. And he said to her, oh, I love my Instant Pot. It's how I cook on my boat. And he sort of pointed to one of those big, fabulous yachts that was sitting outside. So they got to talking about it, and it turns out that he cooks most of the time on his yacht with his Instant Pot, and he had brought it into the restaurant for a potluck that they had had for the Super Bowl, but the staff had cleaned his Instant Pot for him, and he was going to take it back out to his boat. So I want to give a shout out to all of the people who use their Instant Pots on their boats or in their ivory V's or in some other unusual situation because this is the perfect recipe for you. Today we are going to make Boston brown bread which is an old old recipe. People have been making this for years and years and even if you make it on the stove top or in the oven you usually make it in some kind of a tin can and it used to be that you could make this in a coffee can. Well, I went searching for coffee cans and they don't make coffee cans like they used to. Very few of them are actually tin. They're all cardboard. And so I did use one last night and this little uh, cake of Boston brown bread here was made in a one pound coffee a can and I did not find that it was very useful but instead I found that these are perfect and especially for people that are traveling so these um, that we're going to use today are both uh, coconut milk cans and they are tin and they're very sturdy and they're safe to go in your instant pot so I'm going to finish prepping for the can before I even get to the recipe so that you can see how I do this. You're going to want clean cans and if you don't have any of those but you do have one of the springform pans that sits into the Instant Pot, this would also be perfect for Boston brown bread. And what you want to do is just really spray your can. This is perfect spray and get your cans ready and then you also want to have some tin foil that's going to go on top of each of your cans and so you're going to spray the tin foil too and just have that ready for when you're going to put the bread in the instant pot 
So let's see if we have any people with us. Linda has been camping in Florida with a generator to run it. You are a great camper if you can organize that. Hi, Cami. I see that you're joining us today. You've used it in a condo on your vacation. Hi, Kristen Stuckey. You've taken it to your friend's house and hotels. Uh, Bruce took to parents' house to make wings for the Super Bowl. See? Uh, Linda. Hi, Linda, friend of the show. Linda Bragg, hello to you. Diane Yoakum, friend of the show. Nice to see you. Um, so glad that you're all joining us. So let's talk honestly. Not everything is wonderful made in the Instant Pot. And I was a little skeptical about bread being made in the Instant Pot. And I've read recipes all week about how to do it and what kind of bread. And I landed on Boston brown bread just because it's a sweet, non-yeasty bread. This particular one is um, vegan and gluten-free. This is my own recipe that I've adapted for the Instant Pot. And I was a little skeptical because even though I love the IP, I'm not convinced that everything is better in the Instant Pot. And I would say that this is one of those recipes that if you are in a motel, if you are out camping and you wanted something for a sweet dessert or a lovely breakfast, then this is the perfect recipe for you. It is, however, very different than Boston brown bread that's baked in an oven or steamed on a stove. And that is interesting to me because Boston brown bread is typically steamed and it can have a very dense and pudding-like consistency. And in the Instant Pot, that's exactly what it is. So this morning, after I got everything ready for the show, our colleague Bill uh, ate a piece of it, and he said, well, I absolutely love it with the dense and pudding-like consistency. So please remember, if you do bread in an Instant Pot, it's very different than bread that you would bake in an oven. It doesn't, uh, the leavening doesn't rise the same way. It does have a moist consistency. It's very dense, but it becomes very dessert-like. This with uh, toasted with butter and butter and jam or maybe a little syrup or a little sauce. Lovely. But it's not like bread that you would make in an oven. So, uh, hi Darby, glad to see you with us today. How are you? Uh, Diane says that she makes cornbread in the IP all the time. You know, Diane, if you get a chance, uh, throw the link to your cornbread. If you've got a recipe, throw the link into the comments so that other watchers could see what kind of cornbread you're making in your Instant Pot. Um, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the recipe. Um, here in my nice orange bowl, I have put a cup of gluten-free flour, half a cup of gluten-free cornmeal, three tablespoons of coconut sugar, um, some xanthan gum, one teaspoon of baking soda, and um, just shy of a teaspoon of salt. And I've mixed all of that together. And here is a little hint for you for any time that you bake with raisins, it is a good idea to dump your raisins, and this is about a half to three quarters cup of raisins. It's a good idea to actually put your raisins in with your dry ingredients and then stir them around. And what this does is that it keeps the raisins from sinking to the bottom during cooking. If they have a little flour on them, then they become more part of the mix. So that's just a good tip for whenever you cook with raisins. All right. The other thing that I have here is I have... Um, almond milk that I have turned into sour milk by adding some apple cider vinegar to it. And then we're going to add the molasses to it. it call, the recipe calls for the molasses for the Boston Brown. But here's another helpful hint. When you're going to be using molasses, spray the measuring cup, pour in your molasses, which I love. I love to lick the spoon when we're making anything with molasses. And then it pours, oh, sorry, I poured it in the wrong spot. Pours right out. 
no problem. Look at that. No sticking, no problem with it. I love that method. Just keeps everything so much neater and cleaner when you're using messy molasses. So now you're going to add the wet ingredients to the uh, dry ones. And with any kind of quick bread, uh, it's a good idea to only stir until the ingredients are incorporated. When you're using gluten-free flour, that is not as important as if you were using regular wheat flour. With wheat flour, you don't want to develop the gluten. And so even with this, though, you don't want to overmix. You just want to get everything nicely together. And one of the things that you do need to make sure is watch your raisins and make sure that they do get wet in the mix so they don't just come out flowery and weird looking. Okay. So what I'm going to do Oh, Diane uses a Jiffy Mix. Diane, that is really cool. I didn't know that you could do that. Nancy Crawford, nice to see you. You make vegan and gluten-free desserts. Yeah, I, I really like, I have to cook that way for my daughter. And um, she has lupus, and it just makes her feel better when she eats vegan and gluten-free. So we do a lot of that in our house. Now, I'm just going to show you one of these. When I did this last night, remember, I always test these recipes for you. That's my job. I'm the tester and the demonstrator as much as I am an educator. I like to do this before we come to, to the show so that I know what to tell you. And what I learned from last night is don't fill it very full and knock it down. So I'm only filling this about two-thirds full because it will rise as it cooks. So then what you're going to do is take the greased side of the tin foil and just make a little hat. And I get it nice and firm around the can. And then I lift it up. See that? And I firm it again. Because I want there to be a little headroom to not keep it from rising. All right, so in my instant pot, I have four cups of water and a trivet. And with these cans, it's just perfect. To set this in, you can get three of these foil topped cans on your trivet. And you want the water to come up, oh, to about a third or a halfway on your can. And that way, the bread gets a little bath. So I'm going to set this one in there. And that's just perfect. And then I'm going to do one more. While I say hello to who else is out there with me today. I wonder, I haven't seen my sister, Sarah, say hello if you're out there. I love that you people take your, your, uh, <laughs> that you take your Instant Pot with you camping. I think that is amazing. I haven't done that yet, and I have all the quick and carry bags I could ever want to take my IPs with me, and I've never taken one camping. Maybe this summer that'll be my goal. I like to go to music festivals, and I could certainly feed all my neighbors if I took my Instant Pot with me uh, to a music festival. That would really be fun. Okay. So remember, one of you is going to win a quick and carry bag. I do want to tell some of you this. I know that some of our viewers are very patiently waiting. Uh, we have a wonderful problem here at Quick and Carry. We're all sold out. Thank you for that. Those of you who have uh, helped us sell out over the holidays, and now in January, after everybody got their pots, they all wanted bags to put their pots in, and <laughs> we're all sold out. I promise you, they're on the way, and hopefully uh, by next week I'll be able to tell you exactly when our new bags will be on Amazon. Again, I've filled this up. I'm going to fill this one a little higher, and now I'm going to bang it, getting all the air out. I'm going to put its little hat on. 
I'm going to lift its hat a little to give it a little headroom, and into the pot it goes. All right, so here's another thing that I want to tell you about this bread. This is very important. Once you have locked and sealed your lid onto your Instant Pot that has the water for, uh, you know, to come about halfway up on the cans, you're going to set your Instant Pot for 35 minutes. And it depends on the size of the cans, whether that's going to be enough for you. I had to do it a couple of times last night because I had two different sizes of cans. So if you use these little cans, even if you use two or three of them, you could get away with 35 minutes under pressure. If you're using a bigger can or if you're using your springform can, you're going to want to do this for 45 minutes of pressure. Once you have cooked, your Boston brown bread, let it have a 10 to 15 minute natural pressure release, and then take it out very carefully, take the little hat off, and insert a toothpick or a cake tester, and if it comes out clean, you're good. If it comes out a little moist, then put it back in and do 10 more minutes of pressure. This kind of a recipe, won't, it won't bother it at all, and it needs to be fully done in order to hold its shape and be sliceable when you take it out. Once it is done, all you need to do is take it out and let it cool for just a couple minutes, like here on a cutting board, and then I run a sharp knife around it, turned it out, and you need to let it rest. And that's because it is so moist and puddingy, it needs to rest for a moment to gather its shape and sort of get itself together. And then it's wonderful sliced. And as Bill said, he loved the dense, rich, molassesy quality and taste of this recipe. So there you have a really fun recipe that is easy for you travelers, you boaters, you RVers, you campers, you music festers, you uh, hotelers. Um, we hope that you will try this recipe. Remember, we always love your comments and your feedback. I want to make you all aware of, some of you know that for about a month and a half, we've been trying to meet with our local Girl Scout troop, who uh, the girls are all learning to cook in their Instant Pot. So next week, we will be live on site, our very first time that we have taken the Quick and Carry show on the road. So my producer, Kristen, and I will be uh, in Leland, Michigan next Friday morning, and we will be coming to you live with a group of Girl Scouts. We certainly hope that you will tune in for what would be a very interesting show. We're very excited about it. I'm excited to talk to the young ladies who are learning to cook with their Instant Pots. What a great thing to do with a Girl Scout group. So... Uh, Bill does say puddingy. Yes, it is very, very uh, puddingy. I have a winner, Bruce Bice. You have won a six quart quick and carry bag. I hope that you will use it and take your instant pot somewhere very interesting and cook something delicious like Boston brown bread. Thanks to all of you who are here with us today. I so enjoy uh, seeing many of the same names every week. You guys are great fans of the Quick and Carry show. Bruce, congratulations on winning a new bag. I'll contact you this afternoon to get your address and we'll send you one out. Uh, please join us next Friday with the Girl Scouts. We are really excited. That should be a wonderful, unusual kind of show. And thanks again for tuning in. You can always leave us recipe ideas, comments, questions, or concerns. You guys are great, and we'll see you back here in the Quick and Carry Kitchen next week. And as my idol Julia Child used to say, bon appetit. <laughs>